here. We're able to insert this piece here. It gives the bark a little bit more beef, a little, a little more strength. To make four like this takes about a, an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. For the last two weeks, we have been working with Chuck Commanda, Algonquin traditional knowledge keeper, who has amazed uh, us all with his incredible skill at building a traditional Algonquin birch bark canoe. I'm completing the lashings, and lashings are what, what binds the wood to the bark using spruce root. So these are the last ones now. Okay, so now that this is done, we can con start concentrating on getting the thin stuff, the sheeting, and preparing the ribs. Kingston's Inner Harbor is actually Canada's oldest continuous boat building location in historic times. Each year we want to build a different replica of a traditional boat and out of respect for the indigenous people, uh, we thought the very first one should be a birch bark canoe. Under each one of these roots there's a nail, a wooden nail. That's ironwood. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the nail. Each rib will be marked right here. So once each one is, is marked, then as we pull them out, we'll number them. Then we start notching each rib like this. And they'll all fit inside the notch there. And the only thing holding them in place at that point will be pressure. And there's no glue, there's no nails, there's nothing metal. When my grandma died, um, everybody was talking about my grandfather and how he was such a a uh, renowned canoe maker, uh, which he is by his own right, but nobody mentioned my grandmother, which and she was 50% of the team. Because uh, what we've come to understand about canoe making, it was a male and a female thing. And you have to have that balance in life. And so it just made a lot of sense. And then after a while, we started seeing pictures, a man and his wife building canoes. And it, it just made a lot of sense because they both grew up in that environment. And then when they met, they'd build a family vehicle. And so it was a man and his wife, and then eventually a man and his wife and his kids. And the kids were small, and they'd start learning canoe making. So at some point, my grandfather asked me if I'd make a canoe for him. And uh, I started making canoes. I got his blessing. And before he died there, we had a good talk, and we came up with a price, a reasonable price. And uh, he passed on. And so now I've been doing this full time ever since. Um, Maybe be about 12 years now. And not only uh, I find it important that way, but it's important uh, culturally to pass this on to our people, the next generations, uh, and gives them a sense of hope for the future. Um, I don't know if you know life on the reserve. Life on the reserve was such a, a tremendous feeling of despair. Uh, which is why we probably have a lot of addictions on the reserves. But when I go into communities, I give them hope, so I was told. And then we can return to, we can return to our role in the medicine wheel, which was uh, we were stewards of the land, take care, caretakers of the land. And so with that in, heart, in their heart, they feel pride you know, when they participate in the canoe. Twelve-foot canoe. Uh, once it's fully dried and cured, it will weigh anywhere between 30 to 40 pounds, wow. and so it can carry great amounts of weight. Uh, for instance, I seen a picture. Uh, there was two men, full-grown men, and they had their trapping and hunting gear with them, and probably their pelts. And in the middle here, they had a, a full-size moose. Oh gosh! Yeah, so you wow. estimate that at anywhere between 1,500 to 1,800 pounds. Okay. And these these findings are spruce uh, uh, spruce root. That's root, yes. Wow. Yeah. So in a typical 12-foot canoe, uh, it'd be about seven, eight hundred feet okay. of prepared root. We're hoping yeah. that you can make it to the launch next Saturday, 26. <laughs> it's September 26 and 27. We're going to have a grand celebration, a finale of this birch bark canoe build. On the Saturday, we will have a free venison chili feast with social distancing. 
and we will have a blessing and launch of the boat and we will also have the opportunity for any visitor to get out on the water in a birch bark canoe with an Ontario Recreational Canoeing Association certified student for insurance and security purposes. So we have the loan of two other birch bark canoes, so it'll be three all together. So we're excited about that. And then on the Sunday, we're partnering with True North Aid, who are a wonderful organization who sponsor a, a Indigenous girls hockey team up north. And they will be organizing a Truth and Reconciliation Walk. And we will have workshops involved with the water because it will be International Rivers Day. And we will also have the opportunity for people to get out in birch bark canoes. So we hope to see you.